this next video of the workflow series, I am going to talk to you a little bit about specifics with Lightroom rather than just how I organize files, but how I actually edit a photo, what I'm looking for, and how I use each of the little tabs. One of the, thing, one of the products I just wanted to show you, it's expensive, is RPG keys. I bought this about four years ago, so I know they have come out with a different keyboard. But if you find, uh, because there aren't a lot of quick keys, I like to use quick keys, I like to make my editing faster, but also, you know, this is the arm, this arm here, if I'm doing this a lot with a mouse or a pen tablet and trying to just like move around the whole Lightroom um, screen, it can be really taxing on my arm. And guess what? This arm and these fingers I really need for photography. So that is why I have I purchased a few years ago this awesome keyboard. Modi Bodo uh, by DQ Studios is another one. I know a few other companies out there now have these kinds of keyboards. And basically this is for Lightroom. And all I have to do is I go next. I don't have this plugged in so it's not actually um, uh, uh, operating the screen right now. Um, I can do, I can move the blacks, I can adjust the temperature and I, and it's basically a keyboard that I can use just for Lightroom. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit so that you had a chance to see what it looked like. Um, but for this, I'm just going to use my mouse and, and show you because it will just be easier to, um, for you to watch the cursor move across the screen. So if you watch the other video, you'll know that I have several presets that I like to use in different companies that I ha uh, have purchased presets from. I really believe in presets. What I don't like is when uh, there's extra grain added and I'll go over that in the Photoshop video. But for this, basically what I've done is I, I tweak various um, presets and I put them into a frequent folder so that it's really easy for me to use. And guess what? I can also uh, program these keys fairly easily using RPG keys and I can make them part of those frequent presets that I use. It's pretty powerful and pretty incredible, meaning I rarely have to actually use my mouse or my pen tablet to move around the screen. It's just awesome. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Now let's go through phase or step by step. I am going to, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find um, pretty presets. Uh, let's see, user, red leaf. Okay. And video. Um, I don't know where it is. Oh, here we go. Pretty presets. Okay. The one that I like out of the pretty presets is the clean and creative advanced workflow. I love this. Now what I don't like, I don't do a lot of treatments that don't look like it, that don't look natural. Um, I like my editing to be pretty kind of similar to how it came out of the camera, just a little bit of a better version. So I'm gonna, just gonna, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna reset this. There we go. And instead, let's back up. And so what I did was I adjusted one of the all-in-one presets from Pretty Preset. And you'll see it did a really nice job of just adding a little bit of extra contrast to it. So now let's analyze this a little bit. I, I will sometimes adjust the white balance. Usually I do auto white balance in camera except for receptions, in which case I might just use a Kelvin temperature, especially if the reception lighting is the same. Uh, and then I might want to tweak the exposure a little bit, you know, uh, in whatever way. Uh, one of the things that I like is, um, first of all, I've got over here, and I'm just not used to using my actual mouse to uh, to show you these things, but uh, you can, you can fix the color cast on these images. And, and the, these um, color cast fix come from both the uh, to um, sorry, Totally Rad's Replichrome. Um, there's also uh, one to fix reds and highlights a little bit in VSCO. If you go over here, there's like a little tweak 
uh, the little tool kit over here. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff that aren't just adding the film effects. You can add extra sharpening, add a vignette to your image, etc. And uh, basically, uh, so you know, I, I just I kind of like tweak as I go along. What I I don't like is uh, if something's just too white and it's gone to paper white. And by paper white, I mean that this here, you see how it's 88.9, 85.9, 83.9. It means there's not a lot of color information in some of the bright spots of this. Uh, same with over here, same with over here. So what I like to do, and I like that it does it for me, is I'll sometimes reduce the highlights, but I'll also reduce the whites. And you can actually see that happening. This poor beautiful girl, she's got gorgeous skin and I've gone and uh, I've gone and zoomed in on her. So please forgive me for that because she's got gorgeous skin and I know now we're we're looking super close at, at uh, her skin. So let me just I'll zoom back out. One of the things I like uh, and that I don't really do myself are these tone curves and I like to just take them from the preset. So if I were to go reset, uh, and then come back over here and the tone curve itself is what's adding all that extra contrast in that lovely lovely contrast I also really love to boost the clarity but just a little bit and I don't play around too much with this stuff beyond what the preset has done for me and let's go over here to this is what I like about pretty presets I really love the noise reduction so they've done something where they've added a little bit of extra sharpening beyond the default and they've uh, also adjusted the luminance. This is where when your image is has a little bit of grain in it, this one's not too bad, uh, then you can add luminance and just play around with the luminance channel. But what can happen is it can make your image really um, blurry if, if, you're not too, if you're not careful with it. So I'm gonna I'll pull up this because it's probably shot at around 4000 ISO. It's a little bit more of a grainy image. You can see the grain right there. And I'm gonna click on the pretty preset all in one me and I'll just go previous and oh I'll just go sorry um, reset <laughs> and then I, this is just slowing down I think because I'm using a capture software and then here's the all in one and it will actually you'll have to You'll have to trust me on this because the, the uh, it's not letting me move around quickly enough. But it has added a little bit of extra sharpening beyond the default. And then you can go along and you can completely take the grain out, although that looks fake and look at how terrible that is. Um, I just like it somewhere between, I'd say, 12 and 25. And 12 is just fine. I mean, when this image prints or when it's seen on Facebook, it's not going to be seen so big that the grain is going to show up. Some of our cameras are a little bit grainier than others, but that's like an important thing that I like to do to my images is just fix that grain. And I really like at least a starting point for the uh, pretty presets actions. The other thing, and this doesn't work so well with my uh, my D810. It's a brand new camera. It just came out in August. Not all the profiles are set up for it, especially not with some of the preset stuff, but what you can do is uh, when you when you use something like uh, I'll, I'll take one of Jason's shots. This will be an unedited shot. Uh, let's see. I think this is Jason. Nope, it's not Jason. Let's see. I've got. Let me take one of Jason's shots. Here we go. Here's one of Jason's shots. So this is taken with uh, a camera model that that Replichrome and VSCO have actually created calibrations for each of these cameras. Now, my, my camera is a little bit too new. So I used to be able to do it with my D700 and my uh, D610. Uh, Jason's camera is a is a is a um, I believe he's got a Mark II, um, but I could be wrong. And basically, you'll see all of these different camera profiles show up. 
And this is amazing. Even if you don't do now, I haven't done any edits at all to this photo. This is just completely right out of the camera imported. And you'll notice these are some of the Replichrome uh, uh, things. It's not adding grain, but it is improving the blacks and stuff. It's a really lovely way to add a little bit more contrast to your images. And the nice thing is you can batch it. It's pretty incredible. So I can select all of Jason's images and simply uh, give it all the same calibration. Let's say I really like Fuji Frontier as my calibration. Even if that's all I do to an image, it's still a really nice um, way to add contrast to your images without even playing with the contrast slider at all. Uh, this is something I only discovered really last year and I gotta tell you, it's it saved a lot of time in doing extra things in Photoshop. Here's the Kodak Portra. I think that one might be coming. I think what this one, some of these are, these are the ones that come with Lightroom just these that's it these are the ones that get added to your calibration stuff when you have a vsco preset set and then these are all the replichrome if you use totally rad replichrome preset set so i just wanted to give you a little tour of that because this is like one of the things i like to talk to people about what is a really hard thing to explain unless i'm actually showing you on my computer and those are like some of the basic things i do then i just export it like i showed you in the other video bada bing bada boom and and we're ready to go so that's what I do in Lightroom. A little bit of an extra, just showing you some of the extra tweaks I do. Let me just, I'll go back up, I'll do an all-in-one, or even, let me even grab, I'll grab the Portra uh, 1600. You can see it has created a little bit too, too many whites. I mean, it's nice for a high key photo. It doesn't always work for other photos. So I always like to turn down, um, turn this down. I don't like the added grain that it creates. And I believe, no, I haven't done that here. So I will take down the grain and I always do that. And I might have to fix up the luminance channel and things like that. What I love though, is this is one of the tweak things that comes with VSCO are these, it's a low boost. So if I've got an image that's, let's say, a little bit on the darker side, again, none of these have been edited just yet, uh, I can just do a lows boost. Isn't that incredible? And uh, so I just kind of move along. I can reduce color cast, fix the reds a little. Did you see that? Here, let me, uh, let me just show you. So if you find that you've got a lot of color cast, some of these presets are just amazing for it. So let me go back. I'll fix reds a lot. This doesn't need the reds to be fixed a lot, maybe just a little. And even then, I kind of like my images a little bit on the warmer side. You could also reduce reds and casts. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different things out there you can use. You don't have to just use the ones I use. Those are the ones I like. And um, I just kind of wanted to show you through that. The other thing that I really like with the um, with the with this program is let's go back to with these presets. So here's the Kodak 160. Here I'll tweak it again just a little bit. But let's say I've got a really 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 high key image and I've got a lot of whites that I need to change. I can I can you know and just not be paper white or maybe have a little bit of color detail. This comes from VSCO. It's part of their tweak actions that or presets that come with all of their different packs. Look at this tone, creamy highlights. So you can see I'm going to do creamy highlights plus, and it has completely filled in those highlights with like a creamy color that's not, it doesn't change too much the color of the image. Um, it is a little bit yellower than it than you know it probably needs to be. Let me do one over here. I'll just kind of show you what it looks like. See, to me, that's just a little bit too much. I just like my my highlights a little bit creamy. And here's reset. So here it is, pure white. Here it is, 
tone was a little bit creamy. So those are just some things to show you around, some of the presets that I do, and, uh, and it's just because I get asked this all the time, so I thought I'd go over it in a little bit more detail with, uh, with a video. Now, next I'm going to show you what I do to organize and how I edit my photos in Photoshop. So that's coming up next as far as the workshop series goes of this tutorial set.